Hello, I'm Mercury from the band Priest, formerly Ghost, and you're listening to Music Existence with Jake. So we got Mercury here. He's from the band Priest, and the band is currently on tour, the New Chronicles tour. In fact, they just released their single, Just a Game, and it's off their upcoming album, Dark For Dark Pulse, rather. Yeah. And it's going to be great. So how is this tour for you? Let's start off with that. Yeah, it's going on fine. We, do, we did uh, two shows already, one in uh, Portland and one in Seattle. Both good, great turn up. Seattle was sold out. So we always have a good time in Seattle and Portland. It's the two great cities. So we started off there and now we're on our way down to California, to San Francisco, uh, to make a sh do a show at the DNA Lounge tonight. So that's going to be uh, rad, to say the least. So we're very happy. And um, and you're on Music Existence, where we talk about the bonds that each band share with one another. And you've toured with the greats. You toured with Nitzer Ab and Die Krups. And I I've, I've yep. understand they've done their own stuff together and also uh, Frontline Assembly. And with all these bands that you've toured with, do you form these really good connections that have sustained you up till now? Yeah, sure. Yeah, we in uh, earlier named bands from Frontline Assembly, for for example, we we good friends still with Riz Falber and Bill and uh, you know uh, uh, Tim and uh, John Siren that played drums there. So that's these are people that we bump into and know you know uh, and probably we'll do some collab with we have a collab in the in the works but it's too early to say anything yet but uh, including some of the people and bands you named so we're very excited and it's very nice it's also an honor to you know go out and play with uh your former your idols you know that you grew up with music you and Al, it, bands that you listen to when you grew up, you know, that's uh, fantastic. And I know like Mystique is a, a very much a part of your draw and and it's really cool in both yeah. Ghost and Priest. I noticed that that's part of how you guys function. And I know when it came to learning about Ghost, a lot of people were kind of swayed and kind of confused by the image. But then the the music that you guys played was like, no, just listen, focus on the music, and then it all starts to make sense. And that's the same connection that I draw from Priest. Oh, yeah, great. Yeah, so we learned a lot in Ghost. It was a great school and learning process. And uh, we took out the bits and pieces that we thought was really good about that project. And... Uh, Try to refine them and like make it slimmer and a little cooler, more Terminator. And uh, we didn't want to copy the music, go metal all over again. So we dove into machines and synthesizers, synthesizers instead. So yeah, um, yeah, we we basically did a. Uh, slightly a, a little blueprint uh, but i think we have if you really look at it you see more of robocop uh, hellraiser and and terminator in in what we do than than maybe uh old popes and the uh, creators yeah. Covers and stuff like <laughs> that. yeah ghost is very 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 album rock very melodic very but this one yeah. is like you said getting those 80s influences in the forefront, you know, the references that you pulled, Terminator, Robocop, <laughs> I like that. And yes. uh, you definitely draw from a lot of like dance oriented material. And going back to that, um, I wanted to like put that all together and leading into your formative inf influences when you were growing up, um, 
what was your music inv musical environment like and how did those kind of influences the synth pop the metal the rock how did that shape your musicianship growing up I started out more, uh, both my parents were listening to music in my home, uh, not necessarily the music I started to listen to later on, but uh, I only ha all had music all around me. They were both playing, uh, they were musicians, and they are musicians, both of them. My mom was a bass player and my dad is a keyboardist. Uh, it's so it, it was naturally, but I then started to more, mostly to listen to electronic music, like the British rave, uh, ambient, drum and bass stuff that happened in the early nineties, um, jungle and that type of music. So that was what, what shaped me the most. But then I started to play myself and. Uh, in the area I was in, they were mostly like pop bands or metal bands. So then uh, uh, around Lin shopping. So that was the bands you were in. You either played metal or pop. Basically, there were, of course, other genres too, but th those were the main in, in Lin shopping. So that shaped me a lot and i think that shaped other bands coming out of that town too so it's i think it goes that it took up as an example or a mixture between metal and pop and i think you can that was a little bit of the culture of that city at that time were you aware of the music scene once you started a band or did you, were you aware of like the swedish indie bands from like the 90s and stuff because there's <laughs> a lot of windy bands yeah. too like sure do Saturday Kids, Cardigans, of course, all those. Yeah, bands. yeah, Eggstone. Yeah. Uh, yeah, of course, we had a, a view of uh, those bands for sure. Uh, there was a lot of music festivals were very popular in the 90s, uh, 80s, into the 2000s, where you went as a kid to drink beer, uh, too many beers and uh, listen to a you lot. Drink too many beers uh, and you see what happens. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you have to learn. You have to learn by trial and error, right? You know. The, but yeah, but uh, that so that yeah gave you uh, an opportunity to see and hear a lot of bands from all around the world, but also what Sweden the domestic scene has to offer and of course i saw bands like cardigans eggstone uh other pop bands what you this perfect day uh, uh there were a uh, swedish band called kent for example like it was a lot of good pop in the rock bands claw yeah. finger too okay. claw fingers claw finger uh i never saw them live uh they're still going yeah, they're, they, i they're, see they're still out they're there. still out there yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I remember they had some hits in the early 90s, uh, and I don't think it would be appropriate. No, today because they drew some controversy very early on, but yeah. they, it's it's the same thing you do. It's very daring, and you got to take your chances, you know, just to see what kind of audience yeah. you can, you know, garner from the approach that you do, and you're continuing with that now. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think it's important, but it's not always easy because you're not sitting in the comfortable seat when you're taking a decision right. to to strap on some leather and go out with a mask and, you know, inaugurate a new project like that. It's I think it's um, you lie in, in, in fetus position a little before and you're a little bit shaky before you launch it. But when you when you dare to do that and your effort you see that your efforts bear some fruit and then you couldn't be more proud you know over what you did and that and then you're glad you, that you dared to take the leap and this next step into in, into the unknown which it is you know so uh, just keep on and i will this is what i want to say to everybody that listens uh, uh like just do it you you you, you won't regret it because yeah. if you did it and regret it then you, you can still do it then you, you move still on do it right at any time you, know. you can restart yeah yeah it's better better to do it and then you see what happens then you know the the good old 
what would have happened if you know uh, and live with that instead i i think would be uh, much worse than to actually try and fail i think try and fail is is better than to not try at all leading into that um your new single just a game how did that come about what inspired you to put that out as a single i uh, it started with a bass line. I, I, I love the bass line because in the studio I was mostly doing bass lines at the time uh, in Stockholm, uh, which we had a studio back then. So if the bass, if you could listen to the bass line for one hour without getting bored, I, I take that as a as a criteria for using it as in a song. And if you listen to just the game, it's the same bass line just repeated all over, through the song. Takes you back to the house. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, if you, and you, then you come back, have a cup of coffee. They're still going. If if it still attracts your attention, then I think it's you. You you can safely use it in a song without feeling ashamed. Uh, but then, uh, okay, then you have to make up the melody and lyrics on top of that baseline, right? Uh, so I had like just the game uh, the, the the chorus then the verses i didn't know if it's gonna be about what it is but then i just thought ready play one the movie which is a cyberpunk movie by steven spielberg uh is we want to make references right uh the pop culture and i thought that was fun to make that into like a a little playful futuristic uh, song about uh, sexual endeavors uh, in the virtual realm. Uh, so we don't touch each other. It's like Demolition Man, you know? You know? They, they sit, they're sitting there, Sandra Bullock and Sly Stallone, and they, it, it was a little bit about that scene in Demolition Man. Yeah. So uh, a playful take on it. Sexual endeavors in the virtual world. They're kinky, they're exciting, you, you yeah. never know where you're yeah. gonna end up. <laughs> Exactly, and it's probably safe as well. I yeah, because yeah, it's know. all virtual. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can go even. Yeah, you know, where where does it end? I don't know. You know, but it, 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 I think it's it's something that we will uh, see in the future. Uh, you know, and we already see it. You know, you've seen the devices in in Japan. I, I yeah, saw they're some all over. device that was strapped onto a guy. Yeah, and. Yeah, he he was lying down with the, you know, virtual glasses or whatever you call it, and uh, some kind of device strapped to his groin. Yeah, I think. yeah. And uh, like, yeah, uh, he was experiencing something there. So that's what a song is about, you know, basically. And it's it's also in a in a much like safer and more general way. It it gives everyone access to to just better technology in general and i think now with the technology we have now with music you're able to it's so much more it's so much easier to let your creativity flow yeah for sure and uh, you can if you have the patience and you know you, you can make music on the road as well but it's mostly too stressful to actually manage to do that but with all the devices it's really no excuses nowadays to not do if you really want to do music you you just you start doing it you you can have a fairly cheap computer uh, super cheap computer i mean yeah and start right off you know it's you don't you don't have to have all this studios and gear yeah you can have you, know, you can have atari fun. 800 <laughs> yeah you can i we had a, a atari 1040 uh we didn't use it in priest but uh that's actually how i started programming music when i was a kid on on my dad's atari 1040 so with the first cubase uh version there so uh yeah it was you can do it with a, anything basically you can do it on your phone. Yeah, you know. with the whole um, Dark Pulse album, the Dark Pulse concept, does it fit within a specific vignette, or is it all just part of a cluster of of different themes that c 
coincidentally fit together. I think but it's a the creative process is a matter of both. Uh, you you have the happy accidents which you stick with, and then but you have an overall arcing idea, of course. And I, the overall uh, idea, uh, this album started to emerge maybe halfway through the process of writing. So then the writing could take a turn into to make it holistic. You know the 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 whole album and. I think as soon as you have a title on your album, like Dark Pulse, in this case, uh, it's much easier because then you know which songs to fit in there and what you want to express with the album. And in this case, it's a dark. It's our darkest album. It's also our more, most beat-driven album. It's more, uh, m more four on the floor and maybe danceable elements in there than it is pop melodies and stuff you will get that too of course because it's a priest album but it's it's darker and dirtier you know both lyric wise and uh, and music wise and it also uh, takes inspiration from time when i was living in berlin and experienced some fun stuff at clubs and where i also got the whole idea for creating priest this band so uh it's a little homage to Berlin, but also like a, a little dangerous homage. <laughs> <laughs> dangerous homage. That's that's really uniquely said. And I I it I think I can draw some comparisons to to Body Machine, your last album, because you wanted originally to get more of those elements into the forefront. Like you said, the four on the floor, very bass driven very bumping and very hit oriented too i don't know how much hits matter these days yeah, like yeah, they yeah. did in the 50s and 60s but now yeah, now yeah, with, I mean... with just a game it does have that that hit potential that marketing potential. <laughs> thank you awesome thank you so much yeah. i hope so and uh I'm very proud of that song, and uh, I think if you like the songs that are already out, uh, like Just a Game or Burning Love that came out le uh, late last year, you're not going to be disappointed on the rest of the album. It's going to follow that uh, line, and I think we have a, the the tracks have a very high lowest level on this album. So I, I think we we really struggle with getting as good quality on the lyrics and the songs as possible and uh, i think this is our best album to date and i'm very proud of it and very excited about it and i can't wait to share it all with you guys and uh, and uh, when it's released you work with uh with simon soderberg he's also in ghosts and how far back do you guys go and like how do you feel about his approach that he's doing now with uh, your current music? I love his way of thinking because he thinks very different than uh, I do. He also have more experience in producing, of course, since he produced uh, Opus Eponymous, the first Ghost album. Among many other things, he was like he had his own studio in Lin Shopping uh, way back before Ghost. So uh, he was active in that, uh, yeah, line of work you can say, since early two thousands, and that's also where we um, we went to the same school, you know. Uh, so we knew we didn't like hang out, but we knew about each other. Oh, just through other people, and then eventually you cross paths. Yeah, but we 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 were like two years from each other in 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 the music school so i was more like a freshman and he was so you didn't hang out too much with the other you know class like people who weren't part of your yeah. like uh section or batch or age or yeah whatever. that was you know so and we i had my own classmates there so but all the guys uh, like martin went to the same school and uh yeah, so, and we had other bands, they had other bands playing before Ghost and before 
so there, there, was, there was like everybody knew about each other and, and was at concerts back then so early 2000s late 90s uh, we start most of us started out in to, to play in bands in Linköping so, around that time would you say that you guys in Priest along with Simon do you think your bonds have gotten a lot stronger over the years yeah of course we we had uh, ups and downs you can say but we managed to yeah, good. now we have a really good uh, we always had a really good uh, relationship in the studio and everything and uh, uh, Simon believed in the project very early when it still was in go so we started to produce the first tracks while go uh, they he was still in go so we had to produce uh, wait until he was, he was home from touring in order to produce the next song for the first album we did so it was a lengthy process but uh, then when we released it everybody thought the songs were was about ghost but i was like yeah maybe one song was about that but th i i wrote that two years ago now it's released two and a half years later and now you think i'm <laughs> I'm mad or anything. I was like through with everything uh, much earlier. So, but when the songs are released, people, of course, want to read stuff into them and and uh, and themselves continue the the. Uh, sometimes it seems like other people want to continue a, a beef that never happened. Basically, oh, yeah. <laughs> a kind of illusory correlation. Yeah, but it, it seems like most people wanna wanna like believe that or believe that I'm still angry. They stick or, with yeah, it for like yeah. far too long. It's like let <laughs> it go, guys. They're just yeah, people. doing another. Listen to my. Uh, I have a new band now, which I had for like seven years. Like, <laughs> do you wanna? I mean, so, uh, but some people they they really. They, some people can come up to me and say, like, I, I don't like you. Uh, I, why not? Oh, but because you said that and that. And I was like, what? But what, what, what are you talking about? This was probably eight years ago. And probably, you know, I, I don't re re you, it's probably modified also what you say, you know. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, it can be a bit. Well, well that's life, I guess. <clears throat> And uh, and you obviously you're not the same person that you were seven eight years ago. You've you've learned a lot, and and bringing that all together, considering your career thus far, what have you learned about yourself? Not only as a musician, but as a person. Well, being active in the music business as we are. But as as an indie band, in our case, it makes you. Uh, I try to stay humble, and uh, you know, I am humble, and I'm I'm very. I know I'm privileged to to make a living out of playing music and touring and do all the other business stuff that a band uh, requires, because uh, it's music is maybe 5% of of what we're doing right now it's mostly traveling recording doing stuff but i love every aspect of it and i knew early that i wanted to be a part of it and while you embark on that journey you realize that you have to get you get toughen up you know cuz there's people out there that can um, yeah easily uh, if you're not aware you can get get let down into the wrong rabbit hole so to speak so they take advantage of you they take yeah. you for granted they just uh yeah man, they, so, cast your side, they brush you off yeah it's, yeah yeah it's, it's it's full of of that and we i think every every musician that have been in the business for a while have a story or two or three or four about that kind of stuff so but I, I, with that said you toughen up and when you do that, you get more aware and then you can start moving more freely, which, and I also, we had a great, uh, we have our own record label and we do everything independently ourselves. Basically, we don't take help from a major label. We have, uh, of course, a distribution company and some other stuff that are connected. 
but we wouldn't have had that if we would get signed on a major label directly. And the funny thing is, we were about to get signed on a major label in Sweden, but we got we got a bit of blacklisted, you know, because of the ghost thing. So they didn't want to. Um, the people oh, they, they read too far into ghost and now they're all paranoid and all yeah that. yeah it was like yeah very strange times but it ended up us not getting signed by that major label and also not getting airplays that we wanted from a radio station because the radio station was called up by people that worked for ghost and stuff like that so there was there, there was a little campaign going against us getting uh, too big too quick but that resulted in us actually constructing our own companies and uh, record labels. And now we do everything ourselves and can keep larger part of cut. We don't get as much exposure yet that we would get on a, from a major level. So oh, that was like a, was that like a learning curve? Yeah. Did you have to like, learn a line in that process? Like, fuck. Like... Yeah. That, that, then you also learn that that's show business. It's, it's full of that stuff if you say the wrong thing to wrong person then you won't get the role in the next movie or you know or you know that it, it's 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 a form i would say it's a form of you know uh mobbing or something or bullying you know but but it, but for at uh, the adult version of it but you just cope with it and you brush it off and you you take the next step and you I'm very happy today that that happened because now we have full control over every aspect of what we're doing. So we wouldn't have that if it if we were get signed to a major label directly, you know. And mm -hmm. so I'm I'm and I encourage other bands or artists to actually do that and take the extra time to start your label and go independent, you know. Nobody needs a medium sized or small record label to sign on to actually. If you know how to do it yourself, you can, you know. Lastly, anything you'd like to say to your fans? I would like to say we love you guys and thank you so much for your support during a couple of hard years, especially during the corona and the stuff that preceded it. And that you continue showing up at the shows and in that you tell your friends because it's more and more people coming so we're very proud and happy to have you guys and hope you will follow us further on our journey and you won't get disappointed we get more in store for you so and the next album dark pulse is out may 31st and you can pre-order it practically everywhere right now you can also check out our website uh, priestnexus.com and you can also find some merchandise on uh, airgool.com. So check that out. And I was just, we from Priest want to say a big thanks to you all. And if you have the chance, come check us out on our US tour that are going on right now. Most dates are in California, but we're also going to do the Dark Force Festival in New Jersey, along with a show in Mechanicsburg and in Newark, uh, Delaware. So uh, thank you everyone and thank you for having me on your uh, great show. Mm -hmm.